Good morning one and all and welcome to the video. This video I would be showing you how to organize or rather I would say what's the best way to organize large Python projects. So essentially scripts, writing packages, modules, um, essentially we'll talk all about that. And how do we you know, convert these packages into a zip file and ship it to AWS S3 and then we can load it into a runtime. So I'm gonna be talking about all of that in this video. Uh, so I have been uh, going through a lot of Stack Overflow, Stack Overflow posts, blogs, and I took a one course on Plural Site, which essentially gave me a nice idea on what's the best way to do it, right? Where do I organize my test file? Where do I write my packages, modules? So let me show you that in this video, okay? So, um, uh, all right, so I'm gonna switch to my screen, hopefully. So hopefully you guys can see uh, my screen and uh, before we jump uh, any further, give me one second. I just gotta make sure that I'm using my display capture. Okay, I'll try to you know zoom in as much as I can, um, but uh, yeah. So this is what I found on the internet is the best way to do it. Um, so you, first of all, whatever project you're working on, whatever package or module you're making, make up some a folder called project underscore files. In that, you would have these many files, and this is the standard approach which all the people in the industries as well are following for Python. You will have a docs. This folder essentially would have all the documentation. Examples would have all the examples of your code. Test modules would have all the individual test file. SRC is where you would write your modules. So for example, I just have one module for now called database module, uh, and do keep in mind, in my company as well, I have followed similar approach. Uh, so database module, you have two files. So I have a db.helper, uh, nothing fancy, uh, it's a simple class. Now, how do you, uh, you know, import this? So init file essentially acts as, uh, so you gotta import all your classes name into the init file. So you're, you know, so so w w always we go from up to bottom approach here. So you say from the main uh, root directory, which was project files dot src dot uh, the folder name dot fi python file name import the following class okay so hopefully this makes sense we said from project and look at my mouse here from project from source from this from this import that okay so we did that right this is the way to import it right and and as i said you can have hundreds or thousands of classes um in my company i wrote about nearly about uh, we were writing some code and we reached more than 3000 lines of python code and we had so many classes how do we organize this is the way you organize it right so now that's your package right one of the module you have is database module anyone you want to use it simply import it now how do you import it in the outer directory guys you need two files and i'll tell you why you need this two file you need underscore underscore in it and underscore underscore main the reason you need underscore underscore main is essentially if you would like to run the code uh, directly if you want to run the package uh, you need the main file and uh, essentially if you're planning to zip archive and you want to use it as a module in your code then in that case you would need underscore underscore in it but let me just show you a little bit um, in, in, in main i have a main controller uh, so now see how i'm importing from project files dot src dot database module import this i do not specify the file name because i've already imported that in the init file once you did that i have a simple class this is the class that is being exposed to the in the client right the client has access to this class now a couple of ways to run this uh, of course now i'll show you one of the ways uh, you can if you are doing if you so it depends upon the application, as I said, if you wanna use this as a package, you can, uh, for sure, you can use it like this. If you wanna run it, you can come here, you can run the main file. But I'm gonna show you other ways as well. Let me just show you. So now I wanna show you the zip way. So let's do this. Now, if you wanna run it, so what you, let's say you are in the outer directory. And you, now this is a module that you wanna run. If you say Python uh, run, it's not gonna work. Let me show you that. So open in terminal. Now, do keep in mind, I, have, I am in the project directory, okay? I'm gonna say Python minus M, that stands for a module, and the name of the module, that's all you have to say. And there you can see, you can run it like that. So this is how you would run it if you are using as a module. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. But if you're not using it as a module, and if you're zip archiving it, that means, let me show you again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say show in Explorer, just for the example, uh, so I can show you, uh, I'm gonna delete this zip file. Uh, before that, I need to do one small thing is, okay. Uh, okay, 
So this, so say, say you made this module and you want to use it in your code at runtime, right? You want to load this module. So you click on 7-zip and you zip the file. Now, how do I run the zip file that comes, to, comes into question, right? So essentially now what you would do, uh, you, uh, I have made a class for you. I've done all the heavy lifting for you. Let, let's put it that way. I have a loader class essentially, which says get zip. So essentially you provide the, so now there are two approaches. When I say, I have a flag here which says local zip, which means if the zip is in the local directory, then use some code. If it is in the AWS, then use some other code, right? So in the, uh, this, this library is so generalized, all you have to do is replace your access key, secret key here on the AWS part. Uh, you know, now, how do you do this, right? So you provide the key, that's a zip file. Now remember, this is in the local one, okay? So you say get zip locals as true, now, before even running this, okay, oops, I'm gonna comment out. So now when I print instance, I have essentially, remember, this is coming from the zip file, okay? Uh, so I have the entire instance of that class init. That's the reason we added that init file. So now if I try to do dirs on instance, you have all the classes here, right? So what I'm trying to, prove to you or, or I'm gonna show you is essentially now you can directly access that class using the dot operator on the instance. Remember, we had a class in the init called main controller, right? I'm accessing the directly class, I'm loading the zip file, I'm loading it on, 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 the, on the Python and then I'm saying, hey, I wanna use this class main controller. So if I run this and with magic, it's gonna actually work. Uh, so it's gonna run that. So as you can see, this class ran successfully. And remember, this is coming from here. You see that run, uh, the print statement. So it's pretty amazing, right? So when you're developing code base, right? Massive code base, always all the, you'll have an SRC folder, then you'll have subfolders for all the modules. Then you will imp then you would import all those modules into, uh, so, so whatever the interface is, right? Your client interface. In this case, in the init file, that was the interface, right? So if that's an interface, I wanted to expose that interface. So if you wanna uh, expose that interface, you can zip archive it, deploy on AWS S3, then use my code that I've written. It would load the instance at runtime for you. So essentially that what it does. Now, as I said, the test files are also, everything goes in the test folder. So you see everything is so well organized and um, um, so now you can run the test file, of course. Uh, I'll try to run. One test ran and everything went okay. So see how you import in the test from project file dot SRC dot database module import this. This is how you wanna follow a convention throughout because um, as I said, it would make your life much more easy. Any developer who's reading the code, he'll be like, oh, that's a well-organized code. I can easily find things. Okay, these are the module, these are the packages, these are the documentation, here is the example, here is the readme file. Everything is there here. So it makes really, really sense. You wanna follow this approach, um, yeah. But as I said, um, I have written all these classes for you, so you don't have to do it. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section. This entire template, I would leave it in the GitHub section so you guys can see, read the structure and follow uh, with me. Uh, but yeah, this is what I have found over the internet people are using, um, you know, for uh, organizing their large Python files essentially. So as I said, into modules, packages, and then uh, if you don't wanna use a zip archive, you can simply say from project file import main controller. If not, if you wanna use uh, this as a runtime, you zip it, uh, put it on the AWS S3, then you use the loader class to load the zip uh, essentially into the runtime. So you load that class instance, and then you say dot you know, main controller. This should give you a really good example. I, I spend a lot of time like just searching on the internet for what's the best way, what's the best way I do it. Okay, how do I load the zip archive file? How do I load the instance uh, without downloading the code? All, all that, right? So hopefully this video would have helped you if you are looking uh, for um, something like this, right? How do I organize large Python files? With that being said, if you have any more questions, please list your question in the comment section below and I would be very happy to help you out. Uh, but don't get me wrong, if I do not reply to your emails or comments, that certainly means I am busy with things. I do have a nine to five job and other things as well to take care, but YouTube is something I just do out of my fun and just to teach people, right? With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming, and I would see you guys in the next video.